Hello everyone, welcome to the MOOC course ML for Earth. My name is Xiao Xiang Zhu. I am a chair professor for data science in Earth Observation at TUM. Today is my great honor to introduce you the introductory module of the whole course. It's called uh, Artificial Intelligence and Data Science in Earth Observation. Since the whole course is about Earth Observation, I will first show you a video to bring everybody to the same page. So in Earth observation, we are working with the satellites, typically the low Earth orbit satellite. They are orbiting the Earth and ma making the measurements of the Earth's surface. As you can imagine, why satellites rota um, orbiting, the Earth itself is also rotating. In this manner, we are able to get the measurements of the entire Earth um, and also, if the sensor would steer to a certain geo uh, location, it is also possible to get a very high resolution measurements of the Earth's surface. Um, the geo-information retrieved from Earth observation data has been used for various uh, downstream applications, ranging from global change research uh, to Earth system and environmental sciences, Meteorology, for example, is the typical application field of Earth observation. And also, uh, um, we are following the UN's agenda on sustainable development goals. EU has been serving as a very uh, efficient way to monitor the progress of these uh, developments. And also down to very practical things if we would have very high resolution data, like safety, security, mobility, resource management, or even to very practical things like um, uh, urban planning. We are currently living in the golden era of Earth observation uh, simply because uh, uh, we are now basically uh, better than ever have a, a huge amount of uh, prestigious infrastructure in the space. And uh, this slide just gives you an overview about the ESA uh, Earth observation missions where you can see we have the um, classic uh, meteorology satellites. And uh, on the left side, you see the Science Explorer missions, which is more for future mission concepts. But the real game changer is the MIDA-9, which is the companion course program of the ESA, where there is a, a whole fleet of satellites of Sentinels, and they are a kind of a mapping machine providing um, higher resolution uh, data of the Earth's surface on an uh, um, up-to-weekly uh, basis. So um, we inevitably arrived in the golden era, and uh, as I mentioned, on the one hand, due to these uh, uh, Sentinel missions and also other national satellites, they provide continuous, reliable, and quality-controlled EU data. And more importantly, these data are all free and open to everyone who want to use this type of data. And also very important aspect is uh, the future missions has been already under discussion. This means there will be a guaranteed uh, long-term access of the data. And on the other line, uh, from the commercial side, uh, at the moment there is also a blooming time period of new space uh, there are different companies like uh, Planet Labs, ISI, Capella Space, and so on. Uh, take Planet Labs as example. They are uh, uh, launching hundreds of uh, small uh, cubic satellites, and this has uh, typically a size of 20 centimeters, and they are uh, basically orbiting the Earth uh, with very high uh, temporal frequency and can offer even though not the high, highest quality, but basically a daily coverage of the Earth. So these are kind of complementary to uh, the approaches which is operated by the space agencies. So uh, triggered by the availability of the big data, and in the community, we also see that uh, internet giants and the startups, they are entering the EO, like uh, Orbiter Insights, uh, uh, Google, Microsoft, they also uh, start to produce a global geo product like the building footprints. And uh, 
uh, this is basically the big opportunities we have, but then it's also come along with the uh, methodologic challenges because all the classic um, analytic methods we have in Earth observation that would not be any more sufficient uh, when we confront it with the big data. And this means we need uh, artificial intelligence in Earth observation. And also, uh, since we have uh, very high quality demand, so in EO, every satellite image uh, of the pixel is rather considered, uh, considered to be a geodetic measurement. So this also means uh, we cannot simply uh, borrow AI methods from computer vision and uh, do the job. Instead, we really need EO specific AI research and the tailored innovative AI for EO methods. So um, this is just a, a, a more or less a motivation slide uh, from a full system. I introduced you the observational system. On the other hand, I also introduced you uh, the users who profit from geoinformation extracted from the Earth observation satellite data. Basically, AI and the data science rather play in the bridge role for the information retrieval to turn observed data to research services and applications to the downstream users. If we talk about AI and data science in association, there are a few uh, thematic focus. Um, on the one hand, we need to look at explorative model-based uh, signal processing methods towards a better retrieval of the information. On the other hand, uh, we need to look at uh, data fusion. As you know, for any uh, geographic application um, today, it's uh, uh, more or less the standard case that we would have various or for uh, Earth observation data source available. Uh, basically, the key question is how to optimally extract information complementarily from these various data source to serve individual applications. And of course, uh, information mining is important. Um, assuming, uh, given that uh, we are basically acquiring more than 150 uh, terabytes of data every day, so it's impossible to uh, uh, process all this data. Instead, we need to figure out a way to efficiently mine out the relevant uh, data from the uh, big data archive, which is around um, 100 of uh, petabytes. And of course, ma machine learning deep learning is an important uh, branch of the development where we focus on, instead of model-driven, more the data-driven type of information retrieval. I will talk about this later. And the last but not least, uh, if we are talking about global applications with sentinels, this means we are easily reaching data with several petabytes. Uh, this means uh, basically big data analytics and the high performance computing become a um, um, necessary part of the whole pipeline of data analytics. Yeah, I have mentioned machine learning and uh, um, uh, deep learning. And for this, I have to mention, of course, the neural networks. As you guys probably already know that uh, there was a, a big wave of neural uh, networks uh, in the late 80s, um, uh, which was the power that uh, if you would have uh, neural networks with more than two hidden layers, then basically it is possible to uh, um, um, mimic any nonlinear process. And, but of course, then after the uh, wave of neural networks, uh, it came the winter of AI, uh, which was mostly limited by the uh, uh, training um, demand and the uh, data which is required uh, to train such a, a model. And this was also basically the game changer happened, uh, which we now have the, um, let's say, uh, the a uh, really high phase of a deep neural network, even though the deep learning is a very fancy term, but uh, it's really basically the same as the classic neural networks. It's only that instead of up to two hidden layers, you uh, have uh, a lot of hidden layers, uh, which uh, helps uh, to even boost the uh, learning capacity of the models. But of course, in order to profit from such kind of architecture, 
then it's very important that uh, we have a sufficient number of training data. There is a sufficient uh, um, a computing power for train such a model. And then there is also a breakthroughs uh, in designing the uh, training algorithms. Okay, so deep learning has also already become a kind of established tool in remote sensing. If you look at uh, uh, the literature, you will see basically starting from around 10 years ago, uh, you could see the papers related to deep learning remote sensing. And uh, basically uh, there is a kind of exponential increase of the papers, which also reflects uh, how active this field is. And also uh, I think the trend is going on uh, here today. So you may wonder deep learning in EO is a rather hot topic or is a hype. So if we look at the development uh, in the past 10 years, basically we observe uh, three phases uh, when we talk about deep learning and remote sensing. Uh, in the first couple of years, I would say it's rather a, a quick wins and quick papers. Uh, people in the remote sensing community um, borrow the models from AI and then try to use deep learning for various applications, then the deep uh, 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 conclusion of a paper would be, we can also do it with deep learning. And we increase the accuracy from 86% to 89%. So this was more or less the first three years. And then there is a second phase, um, the remote sensing community understands that it all is different from the internet images. Therefore, uh, it's more about uh, design new tailored architecture for specific problem and also train model from scratch. And now we are still in the phase three. Uh, basically, we are more focused on, on that uh, we need to integrate the uh, domain knowledge we had already for decades into the deep learning models, uh, focusing on opening the black box or turn the black box gray, but also basically how we can re-implant uh, physics-based and the domain expertise into the learning process such that it become more level efficient, such that it is more consistent to the physical world and so on. And in um, our, uh, our opinion, basically uh, in order to be uh, successful, if you want to apply uh, deep learning to EO, uh, it's uh, crucial to understand what actually makes deep learning special in our observation. So firstly, uh, one thing is in computer vision, a uh, majority of the people are dealing with the classification problem, detection problem, segmentation problem. However, this is just only small fractions of the ill problems we have. Instead, we focus on the retrieval of for physical or uh, biochemical variables. So this means we would uh, need to focus on high accuracy. More importantly, the results should be uh, um, reproducible. And also, as I mentioned earlier, every of these pixels are considered to be a geodetic measurements. Therefore, we definitely need to have the quality measures of the results. And also, we should not forget that uh, instead of just having the data, try to learn knowledge from the data, in EO, we already have a dec decadal uh, expert knowledge, which is available. And also different uh, from internet images, we usually have a very well controlled uh, data acquisition, which are radiometrically, geometrically, spectrometrically, uh, very well calibrated. And also, we even know the signal-to-noise ratio of the data. And this kind of uh, quality difference must be taken into account. Another very important aspect is uh, different from uh, internet image, which is a RGB uh, kind of uh, picture with various quality. And our uh, EO data is uh, much, much more diverse. So we claim that in Earth observation, we're actually dealing with the five-dimensional data. X, Y, Z uh, is about any location on the Earth, but also the T because we have the uh, time series data available for any sensor. 
and also lambda. This is then more about the uh, uh, different modality of the uh, satellites, ranging from optical sensor, superspectral, hyperspectral to microwave or uh, satellite data. And in addition um, um, to this kind of satellite data, we also have unconventional or uh, geo data from, for example, citizen science, uh, like a geotech uh, Twitter message or uh, other social media source like um, uh, Flickr or any kind of uh, uh, image platforms. If there would be a geolocation available, they could serve as kind of unconventional sensors uh, for remote sensing. And uh, uh, also different from the uh, uh, CV uh, community, where there is uh, a huge uh, label data sets like ImageNet and for EO, it's typically that we are lacking of sufficient uh, training data. So with this uh, in mind, uh, we advocate uh, the current uh, focus of AI for EO should be uh, basically improve uh, information retrieval uh, from um, observation satellite data or unconventional geo data with the AI and the data science methods, but we should rather focus on problems which are uh, having really high uh, societal relevance. So different from labeling cats and dogs, probably we should rather look at uh, uh, the problem of our time, like uh, urbanization, climate change, or UN's uh, sustainable development goals.